Okay, in this video, we are going to do number six from the 2022 Calc AB AP Calculus exam. And this is a particle motion problem, I guess, where we have two particles moving, which is kind of becoming a theme on the exam. So let's see how this goes. Particle P moves along the x axis such that for time t greater than zero, its position is given by x sub p of t. I hate that they're using these subscripts for everything, but they've been doing it for a couple years now x sub p of t is equal to 6 minus 4e to the negative t. Particle q moves along the y-axis. So one of them is moving horizontally, the other one's moving vertically. Um, particle q moves along the y-axis such that for time t greater than 0, its velocity is given by v sub q of t, which I'm just going to say vq of t from now on, is 1 over t squared. At time t equals 1, the position of the particle q is yq of 1 equals 2. So that's all given information. Part A, find V, P of T, the velocity of particle P at time T. Great question. Um, so V, P of T is going to be equal to X prime P of T. You have to write that these days. You didn't have to use to write that, but now you do. So make sure you're, you're clearly stating the relationship between velocity and position. So we've done that, and now we just have to find uh, V, P of T. So X, P of T up here is 6 minus 4e to the negative t. The derivative of 6 is 0. The derivative of e to the negative t is negative e to the negative t. So we have negative 4 times negative e to the negative t. We just get 4e to the negative t. That's part A. That's the whole thing. Uh, I noticed that this year they have parts A through D on basically every question, and I think that's why some of the parts were like, like, why are you even asking me this type of things? But here we go. Find a q of t, the acceleration of particle q, at time t. Then find all times t greater than zero when the speed of particle q is decreasing and justify your answer. All right, so same thing. We have to connect acceleration to velocity. So I'm going to start off with a q of t is v prime q of t. Um, and then I need to take the derivative of 1 over t squared because v q of t is 1 over t squared. So that's going to be uh, t to the negative second, bring down the exponent, subtract 1. So that's negative 2 t to the negative third. I'm going to say that a q of t is negative 2 over t cubed. So negative 2 over t cubed. And what I did there was I rewrote this in my head as t to the negative second. And then I used the power rule, right? Bring the exponent down, subtract 1. I didn't like the negative exponent, so I made it 1 over t cubed. All right, so final answer, negative 2 over t cubed, of course. All right. Find all times t when the speed is decreasing. All right, so for speed to be decreasing, I need velocity and acceleration to have opposite signs. So if we look at this, uh, vq of t is 1 over t squared, and 1 over t squared is greater than 0 for all t greater than 0. So velocity is always positive. So now I just need to figure out where acceleration is negative, but... Uh, a q of t, we just found, was negative 2 over t cubed. And if t is positive, then negative 2 divided by a positive is negative. So a q of t is less than 0 for all t greater than 0. So these things have opposite signs everywhere, which means the speed is always decreasing. So I'm just going to write that. So since v q of t and a q of t have opposite signs for t greater than 0, the speed of q is decreasing for all t greater than zero. I don't ever remember that being the case before. Kind of a neat problem. Um, let's take a look at the next part. So for the next part, find y q of t, the position of the particle q at time t. So I like to use the fundamental theorem when I'm solving these problems. So I'm going to set it up like an accumulation function. I'm going to say that um, our velocity is 1 over t squared. So y q of t should be where we start, which is 2, plus the displacement. The displacement is the integral from 1 to t of v q of t. So it's going to be the integral from 1 to t. v q of, I need a dummy variable, so I'm going to use u. So I'm going to say that uh, I need to integrate the velocity, which would be 1 over u squared. I'm writing it as u to the negative second du because I have to integrate, so why not use a negative exponent because it makes it easier. And now we just do it. So it's going to be 2. Uh, the antiderivative of u to the negative second plus 1 times the reciprocal is negative u to the negative 1. So I'm going to say the quantity, negative u to the negative 1, from 1 to 2, t, not 2. And then uh, I'm going to do 2, parentheses, 
plug in t gives me negative t to the negative 1, minus parentheses, plug in 1 gives me negative 1. So then when I simplify this, I get y q of t is, I have a 2 minus negative 1 is 3, so 3 minus 1 over t. All right, so that's part c. Uh, we're going to actually need that answer in part D. So no matter what you got, you're going to take your answer to part C into part D and try to work with it. Hopefully you got it correct so that you're bringing the correct thing over. But no matter what you do, bring it with you. All right, next. As T approaches infinity, which particle will eventually be farther from the origin? Now remember, X is on um, X is just on the X axis and Y is just on the Y axis. So one's on a horizontal, one's on a vertical so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to look at uh, the limit as t approaches infinity of their position. So x versus y. So I'm going to look at first the limit as t approaches infinity of x p of t, which is going to be the limit as t approaches infinity of the quantity 6 minus 4 e to the negative t. But for the purpose of limits, it's better to write it as 4 over e to the t because 4 is not growing. e to the t is growing to infinity. So we basically have 6 minus 0, which gives us 6. All right, so that's where x is going to be 6 units from the origin. Uh, now y, we're going to take the limit as t approaches infinity of y q of t. And that's going to be the limit. So we're importing this from the last part. t approaches infinity of 3 minus 1 over t. Now, 1 over t as t approaches infinity definitely goes to 0, which means this will just give us 3. And uh, so that's on the y-axis, and x is on the x-axis. Um, so 6 is bigger than 3. I don't know what I'm supposed to do to, like, connect this at this point. I think my reason is that 6 is bigger than 3. I'm just going to say, therefore, p will eventually be farther from the origin. Um, I don't know if I was supposed to do a, a longer sentence or something there. I will update that with a comment uh, later if that happens. But... Uh, for now, that's the end of it, so I hope you found this helpful, and good luck.